Okay, we'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Tisok de Astan. Uh, I'm joined uh, tonight uh, by Andrew Westall and Ho Huerta. We are consultants on behalf of uh, the city of Alhambra uh, for this redistricting process. Um, before we uh, jump in a little bit, uh, if, if we can, I want to make sure that if anyone needs uh, language assistance, uh, that you're able to go to the right place. So um, while we wait a couple minutes to see if anyone else wants to join us, um, I'll go over some of the language interpretation options for this meeting. Uh, so we have four interpreters joining us tonight to translate in Mandarin, Cantonese, Vietnamese, and Spanish. Um, so if you uh, go to the bottom of your screen, uh, you'll see a globe uh, icon for interpretation. Uh, if you click on it, you'll see options to hear this meeting again in Mandarin, Cantonese, Vietnamese, or Spanish. Um, if you select any of those options, you'll be able to hear that language louder than the English audio. Uh, so uh, give you a, a minute to figure th that portion out. Again, um, we just want to make sure uh, before we get into any of the uh, substance of this meeting that uh, you're able to receive the information in the language of your choice. Okay, uh, additionally, if you do have any questions uh, throughout uh, th this process, um, if you can use your raise your hand feature and the arrow is pointed to that. So you click on that, uh, that will alert us that you have a question. Uh, we will uh, call you out and be able to uh, unmute you so that you can uh, ask your question here directly. So again, uh, my name is Tisok Darsan. I'm joined by Andrew Westall, Ho Huerta, the amazing staff uh, from some of the amazing staff from the city of Alhambra. And at this point, I will turn it over to uh, Vice Mayor Maloney. Thanks, Tizok. Um, so I just want to welcome everyone tonight and just say good evening and, and thank you for taking time out tonight to join us for this important meeting. Um, we're gonna tell you more about the redistricting process and why your participation is so important. Um, I think everyone knows kind of the basics uh, or at least maybe they're familiar with it if they're willing to, to be on a call like this tonight with us. Um, a consultant will kind of go into more detail about how it works. Uh, just a reminder, please, if you have questions, please put it in the chat box down below or you can raise your hand uh, using the raise hand feature and we'll take your questions at the end. Um, I don't know, Andrew or Tizok, if, um, if you can give out the, the commands if folks that are on the phone want to raise their hand. I think you have to, you have to punch in numbers or something. Um, but maybe we can, we can um, uh, provide that before the presentation starts. Uh, I just want to say a couple other things that I'm, I'm particularly proud and, and pleased that we have uh, interpretation available in four different languages and um, Mandarin, Cantonese, Vietnamese, and Spanish. It's, it's, these are languages and dialects that are representative of the community in Alhambra, which I think really is appropriate for the meeting tonight, because we're talking a lot about representation and hearing from our community members, communities of interest, and, and Alhambra is a really special place in our, because of our diversity. And I'm really glad we're providing this opportunity. Um, Sometimes when we provide translation services, people say, well, you know, no one's using it. No one, no one needs that. Um, you know, you don't have anyone really paying attention to those channels. And I, and I think that is missing the point. We have to be able to provide these services to our community, not only if they're used, but so they can be used no matter what. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. Thank you to staff. Thank you to our consultant for really listening to the council on these issues and moving forward with that. So with that, um, I'm gonna, uh, Hit it back to you, uh, Tizak, and, and take it away. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Vice Mayor Maloney. Uh, as uh, the Vice Mayor just mentioned, if you do, if you're calling in and you do have a question, uh, please press star nine, and that will actually raise your hand uh, when you're called upon. Uh, press star six to unmute. So again, 
Uh, if you're calling in and you have a question, please press star nine uh, and uh, that'll raise your hand and then press star six uh, to unmute. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started now. Uh, so again, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight. Uh, as uh, the vice mayor mentioned, this is a really important uh, process that takes place every 10 years. Um, and uh, we're, we're grateful for you to join us. Uh, and I'm sure it's a busy night. Um, redistricting every 10 years, districts must be redrawn so that each district is substantially equal in population. Uh, so that's what this process is. It's called redistricting. It's important in ensuring that each city council member represents about the same number of co constituents. Um, now, this is uh, done after every 10 years once census data uh, is collected. Uh, so why is uh, this important to us? Uh, how and where districts are drawn can shape communities' ability to elect representatives of their choice. Districts must be made as equal in population as practical so that communities have equal access to political representation. Um, so we are currently uh, in the process, uh, as you can see in November, this is the second of the public workshops. Uh, we are in the uh, gathering information phase here. Um, we will have a pre-draft uh, public hearing in December uh, with a draft uh, map uh, adoption in January. Uh, we will then have a pre-final map uh, public hearings in February uh, with a final map adoption in March. So as you can see, uh, we're towards the beginning of this process. Uh, so we're really grateful that you joined us at this time now. Uh, you have uh, plenty of opportunity to please uh, continue to engage throughout this process and um, hopefully invite others to participate as well. Um, so we'll get a little bit into uh, the details of what this process is. Um, there's a lot of different concepts, uh, uh, but what are the legal criteria for redistricting? Uh, so those are the equal population principle, uh, the U.S. Constitution's Equal Protection Clause, uh, the Voting Rights Act of 1965, and then we'll get a little bit more into detail as to the traditional redistricting criteria. Uh, the uh, traditional redistricting criteria, um, so we can uh, obviously answer questions as we move forward, uh, but one is contiguity, so all parts of a district should connect. Uh, compactness, uh, districts should be geographically compact as well. Uh, and existing boundaries, that is, districts should utilize boundaries such as geographic, street, and political boundaries and conform to school attendance zones. And the uh, last would be communities of interest. And that is that districts should preserve neighborhoods and communities of people sharing common interests. And again, we'll get a little bit more into the weeds of that part. Um, so this is what your current city of Alhambra district map looks like. Um, so this will, throughout this process, uh, obviously change a little bit um, based on the new numbers that were uh, reported for the 2020 census. Um, so uh, we showed the uh, timeline of how this process is laying out. Um, this process is made uh, richer by participation uh, from residents in the community. Um, uh, so some of the ways that you can participate in this process, uh, first and foremost, is attending the public workshop, uh, which you are doing now. Uh, as, as mentioned, uh, this is the second of five pre-draft uh, uh, workshops. Uh, so you'll have a, an opportunity again uh, tomorrow to participate. Um, you can submit a public comment form as well. Uh, so you can do that through the City of Alhambra's website. And uh, a little bit later, we'll show you how to just directly email comment. Um, this whole process, we're trying to make it as easy as possible for yourselves, the community, uh, to be engaged, to be able to participate in this process. So uh, we just really want to hear from you uh, about what your community is. So um, again, public comment forum is one way to do that. Um, another way to do that is uh, to actually submit your own council district map. Uh, so that is to say, if you were to draw your own map of how you believe 
uh, the district should be drawn in your city and submit that to us, uh, then we'd be able to see uh, what it is that you consider to be uh, districts or, or how you see your city laid out. Uh, if you wanna take that a step further uh, by going to the city of Alhambra's website, uh, you can actually access uh, the redistricting site and use the online mapping tool. So what that's designed to do is to allow you to uh, digitally be able to uh, create a map. Um, it allows you to see uh, the, the uh, population in each district so that you're able to see exactly how it falls in uh, to be as even as possible. Um, that's something that you can, you know, uh, keep going back to, save your work, uh, try again. Um, you can, uh, you know, if, if you get into it and, and there's multiple maps that you'd like to submit, by all means, uh, we're happy to uh, take and, and consider uh, any maps that you submit through that process as well. Uh, so what type of public input are we seeking um, from the community? So uh, you know your city uh, better than anyone. Uh, so that's why we are asking you for your thoughts uh, about this process, right? So what streets, boundaries, or points of interest define your community? Does your community have major geographical boundaries? Is your community similar to other neighboring communities? And uh, what are your shared interests? So what, what, what do you share with your community? Um, why is it important to protect communities of interest? So uh, why this is important is to preserve communities that share common interests and should be included in a single district in order to have effective and fair representation. So examples of those shared interests are housing patterns, common culture, language, public services, uh, points of interest. So again, you, you, are, you, you wanna be able to, if, if you have things in common with your neighbors, uh, with your community, you wanna be able to uh, use those shared interests and uh, vote as a block to make sure that your interests are being heard uh, at the city. Uh, again, so looking uh, towards the additional uh, workshops that we have going on, uh, again, there will be uh, another one tomorrow, uh, again, on November 16th and November 18th. Uh, these workshops are just designed so that you can uh, get on here and ask questions uh, in real time. Uh, but by all means, you're more than welcome to uh, get on the website um, at any time. Uh, send an email, uh, however it is that you would like to send information or ask questions. Um, but again, uh, we certainly welcome your participation in these workshops. And uh, if there are others that you know are, have questions, uh, we're happy uh, that they attend uh, the next workshops as well. So this is the uh, actual website, what it looks like. Once you go to the City of Hamburg's page, you can click on the redistricting site. This is the public comment form that you can actually access from the site itself. Uh, additionally, if you need information in Chinese, Spanish, and Vietnamese, uh, those PDFs are available uh, there underneath the form as well. And that's the uh, form center. So as we mentioned, the uh, online mapping tool, um, this is what it looks like when you begin that process. So again, you are, <clears throat> excuse me, you're, you're, you're more than welcome to draw hand by hand and submit it that way, uh, or you can use this site uh, that can help you draw as well. And again, we are, you know, happy to have you join us on these workshops. Uh, there's a few more that, you know, hopefully you're able to attend. Uh, but if at any point uh, you just want to call in directly, this is the phone number to try, uh, or not try, but to connect with somebody. Um, additionally, uh, uh, the city clerk uh, will take your email. That's almiles at cityofalhambra.org. Again, the website to access 
city information as well as uh, accessing the redistricting site uh, will be at uh, the city of Alhambra.org. So this concludes um, the presentation. Um, so at this point, um, we're just looking for um, feedback from yourselves, the residents. Um, let us know what you're thinking, any questions that you have, um, you know, any comments that you have, uh, we can take them at this time, um, you know, and, and start the process then. Again, if you have a question, please just uh, click the raise your hand feature and uh, we'll make sure that uh, your question is addressed. Thank you, uh, Tizak. Um, hopefully there'll be some questions. Um, in the meantime, I was just curious as to um, what just demographically, the data that we've gotten from the census already, what does that tell you about how much change we expect to see in Alhambra, um, given that we already had the, the districts that are fairly evenly um, allocated, but um, obviously the demographic changes happen constantly. So what, what do you think we'll be, we'll be seeing? No, that's a, a great question, uh, Vice Mayor Maloney. Uh, this is Andrew Westall with Fair Demographics. Uh, in terms of the uh, demographic profile for the city, uh, currently in the city of Alhambra, uh, if the council chose to, it wouldn't have to make any changes to the current map. Um, and of course, we still need to make sure that we're uh, compliant with the Voting Rights Act, uh, but at least in terms of the deviations uh, and the population in each of the districts, uh, it meets all of, the, uh, all of the other criteria. Uh, the current uh, overall deviation for the city is 7.4%. And uh, that number, you always want to uh, make sure that it's under 10%. Uh, and so we're in good shape there. Uh, the total population for the city in the 2020 census was 83,109. Um, and so divide that by five council districts. And that's what we're trying to do in this process. Um, and of course, you know, it doesn't mean that the current district lines are um, the best uh, you know, the best rendition of what the communities look like in the city of Alhambra. And so we certainly would like uh, comments from the public and questions from the public uh, with uh, respect to how you might uh, define your communities uh, and the information uh, that we would need so that we understand um, how you view your neighborhood, your part of uh, Alhambra, um, so that we can make sure that the uh, final district lines that we uh, submit to the council for approval uh, meet uh, all of that criteria and best reflect the neighborhood. So um, certainly, uh, once again, if the council chose to, we didn't have we wouldn't have to change the map at all. But uh, we did hear some comments uh, at our last workshop, particularly uh, with respect to uh, Granada Park uh, on the south end of the city. And so we want to make sure that uh, we hear comments like that from other parts of the city as well, um, and so we can address those concerns. Can you can you uh, go a little bit deeper into one of the terms that you used a second ago, the uh, Voting Rights Act, the VRA um, aspect of these districts? What are what is our what are we required to do, and what's our objective as it relates to the Voting Rights Act? That's a, a great question, Vice Mayor. Uh, in general, the Voting Rights Act protects uh, minority communities uh, that have uh, large concentrations uh, throughout uh, the city of Alhambra. And so certainly we have a, a very large uh, Latino population, uh, mostly on the west side uh, and south side of town. Uh, we have a, a large Chinese population uh, and of course a significant Vietnamese population in the city as well. Uh, and so as we look at the, uh, the numbers, uh, we wanna make sure that uh, where we can draw uh, majority districts uh, for those communities, we wanna be able to do so. Uh, and uh, in areas where we have uh, if there's any evidence of racially polarized voting, uh, we want to make sure we address that as well. Um, it's the, we don't know at this point um, if there's a whole lot uh, that needs to be done. Most of the population uh, throughout the city is very diverse and, and, and fairly evenly spread out, uh, once again, except for the west side of the city, uh, where you have a, a significant Latino population. So we just want to make sure that as we go through this, um, that we're making, uh, not doing any harm to those communities and they have effective representation for the city council. Thank you for that, Andrew. I, I hate to keep doing this to you, but um, 
you know, the, this process is so loaded with um, different terms and concepts and different things. So I mentioned, you also mentioned racially polarized voting. Can you explain that? Sure. So in, in uh, some areas, uh, and we don't, once again, I don't, we don't know if this exists in the city of Alhambra, uh, but it certainly exists in the San Gabriel Valley, uh, where you have uh, non-minority voters, uh, mostly white voters, voting against uh, minority voters uh, in certain areas of the San Gabriel Valley, uh, voting against Asian, Asian candidates, voting against Latino candidates, uh, where you have significant Latino and, and Asian populations. And so uh, as we go through this process, we wanna make sure that that's uh, not the case in the city of Alhambra. And if it is, uh, then uh, if we feel the need to address it, um, then we'll certainly bring that up with the, uh, with the staff in the city attorney's office. Um, it's, it's, really, um, the, it's, it's really the purpose of the Voting Rights Act is to protect those communities. Uh, once again, if there's large enough concentrations and so, uh, we want to make sure that we are uh, attentive to that while we're um, drawing good districts uh, that respect the neighborhood and community boundary. Mm -hmm. And so, is is that a um, is that an aspect or or a criteria um, to define a community of interest? Is that is that overlap or is that a separate issue from communities of interest? Well, certainly uh, communities of interest can be uh, described uh, by common culture or common language. Uh, and you have a lot of that uh, in the city of Alhambra um, with, uh, you know, as you spoke about earlier this evening, uh, we have uh, four interpreters uh, available with us at each one of these workshops uh, in providing interpretation in uh, Cantonese, Mandarin, uh, Vietnamese, and Spanish. Um, and so uh, certainly there are, are cultural and language patterns in the city of Alhambra uh, that can uh, be defined as a community of interest. Uh, and, and, but it's not really up to the demographers to us to define what the communities of interest are in the city of Alhambra. We really want to hear from the public uh, and want to understand how you define those communities of interest. Uh, of, of course, the, the council will have their input too as we have public hearings uh, in front of the council at their council meetings uh, when we show draft maps and, and final maps. Uh, but um, all of that can be considered uh, part of a community of interest. Right. Thank you for that. And, and I think you, you hit on a, an important point is that, um, you know, uh, demographers can figure out what the census data says and figure out the numbers and get to a point where everything balances out. But that does not, at that point at least, is, has not taken into account what people actually feel on the ground, what, what they see every day in their own communities, in their neighborhoods, um, what things they have in common. Um, you know, I look around at the various maps being proposed at the you know, state and the federal level um, uh, through other redistricting processes. And you, know, you have uh, coastal areas that are, you know, have, uh, I guess that would be uh, points of interest or the you know, shared shared coastal uh, issues affecting them. There are, there are, you know, mountain sort of districts in the mountains. Um, and even right here in the West San Gabriel Valley right now, there is there is some uh, discussion over some of the proposed maps. And I don't want to veer too much into this, but at the congressional level, um, there is discussion about, about splitting Alhambra, uh, Monterey Park and Rosemead from the current district where they are, where they share borders with Arcadia and San Marino and San Gabriel and saying that, that you know, some folks may be saying that we have more in common with El Monte than with San Gabriel or Arcadia. And it's, it's causing some level of concern, I know, in, in the communities there because we have developed this community in the West San Gabriel Valley and all of a sudden, we might be stuck into a district which is a long snaky district way out to the mid or, or East San Gabriel Valley. So it's a really interesting discussion along um, all these different lines. And I would urge people, you know, not not just to get involved in Alhambra's process, but um, you know, uh, pay attention to the other redistricting processes as well. I don't think we're going to see districts in Alhambra that are that are um, highly objectionable or gerrymandered to the extent you see in some other states or or areas of California. But I think it's important for people to participate in this process as well as the state and federal level processes as well. So this is. Um, this is one of those issues that you know may not be very sexy or super interesting to a lot of people, but it is really at the core of our representative democracy about how we draw these lines and and whose voices are heard in the process of drawing these lines. So, um, 
for someone like me who's sort of a glutton for punishment like this, I like it. I like looking at maps and playing with the numbers and seeing it. Um, and I'm, I'm just an amateur at it, but uh, I know how important it is on the larger scale as well. So thank you both for helping us walk through a really difficult topic. I know it's loaded up with terms and concepts and all sorts of different factors that are involved. So it's, it's always helpful to have have you here uh, to help walk us through it and here for our community members to hear what's important and what we need to be paying attention to. So I appreciate that. Um, I, 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 there's questions I think we still, um, we can, we have a few more minutes to, to discuss that. If not, I hope, I hope this maybe sparks some, some, uh, some thoughts in, in our attendees heads and maybe they participate in later um, town hall meetings and then come to the council and express their opinions later down the road as well. Those, those are great <laughs> comments, Vice Mayor. Just uh, um, kind of chiming in on what you were saying. Uh, the, so on the state commission, right, the state commission plans on having draft maps out on the 15th of November, maybe a day or two early. Mm -hmm. And so the state assembly, state senate, congressional maps, uh, draft maps will be out uh, very, very soon. Um, and so you'll certainly want to give comment on that. And then uh, the LA County Redistricting Commission has been meeting for some time and has four draft maps out uh, that they're looking to get public comment on as well. And so uh, all of those could do different things to the city of Alhambra uh, and could it impact representation. And so you'll certainly, uh, if you're interested in the city's process, you want to get involved in, and pay attention to those processes too. Uh, luckily for the city of Alhambra, we have until April until, until we need to finish this process. Uh, those other processes have to be completed by the end of the year. Um, and so you'll, you'll certainly want to pay attention to that. Uh, and to, and to uh, the vice mayor's point, you know, we really, you know, want to understand how you, how you define the city. I mean, do, do, do the people that live north of Main Street, you know, uh, do they relate to the people that live between Main and Mission? Or, you know, do the people south of Valley Boulevard have anything in, in common with the people north of Valley Boulevard? You know, and same thing for the... Uh, you know, the east, uh, the north south streets in, in the city of Alhambra, we have major uh, thoroughfares like Fremont and Atlantic and Garfield. Um, and so we really want to understand, once again, you know, how you define your particular uh, part of uh, a neighborhood in the city of Alhambra, where uh, you may go to school or your kids may go to school, where you may work, uh, where you like to shop, uh, where you may worship if you worship. And so uh, all of that's very helpful in us uh, trying to uh, best define the, the, the five best council districts for the city of Alhambra. Um, if you don't know, uh, the, uh, while the city of Alhambra has had districts for a very long time, uh, they've been at large elections. And what that means is that uh, a candidate uh, would be uh, running in a certain, you know, from a certain part of town uh, in, in a defined district, but they would be elected at large with all the voters of the city of Alhambra. Uh, and that's going to change uh, in the next election where the council members are actually elected by their uh, the five districts. Um, and so, uh, and so we want to make sure that um, to the extent possible, we can get this process right uh, and do, do uh, very good uh, in terms of representation for the city of Alhambra. All right. Um, yep. thank, thank you very much for that, um, Andrew and, and the vice mayor. Um, yeah, just to touch on a few of those, those points uh, to reiterate, uh, this is a, uh, you know, we don't want anyone to feel left out of this process. Um, you know, this happens every 10 years. It's okay to have a lot of questions. It's really okay to uh, not understand, uh, you know, these concepts. Um, that's why we're gonna continue to have these workshops. Uh, that's why that website is there for you to access, um, you know, at any point that you have uh, the time uh, to check back into this process. We understand you have a lot going on as well. Uh, but to the extent that uh, we can uh, get information from you, concerns, thoughts, uh, we want to make sure that uh, uh, we're accessible to you uh, in the way that it makes it easiest for you. Uh, so again, whether that's by phone, that's by email, accessing the website, um, coming to one of these workshops, um, you know, if you're able to, uh, you know, just uh, take some of this in and, you know, think about it and, and, and come back uh, to us at, at the next workshop, or again, uh, just uh, whatever your, your point of contact you wanna make. Um, it, something may seem insignificant to you, um, but we wanna hear it. 
you know, we, we would really like to hear it because it, it may impact, uh, you know, your community it may impact yourself. It might, you know, just your neighborhood. Um, as the uh, vice mayor mentioned, um, we can certainly look at streets and uh, numbers and population, um, but we're really looking toward the community to, you know, really give us that human component um, to, again, you know, it, it may not, uh, it may not matter to others, but it may matter to you. And, and that's exactly what this process is all about. We want to make sure that, you know, if something, you know, is important uh, that we're, we're factoring it into this process. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of, uh, you know, the, the, uh, uh, Andrew mentioned the deviation. So that's just, you know, we want to make sure that, uh, it, well, the process dictates that you have a, a certain amount of population in each district that, you know, levels out. Deviation allows for the ability to go, you know, up or down just a little bit. And all these factors that we're talking about, these uh, common interests and, um, you know, the trying to preserve communities allow us to uh, increase that population a little bit decrease when when necessary uh, so that it's not exactly set in stone it's impossible to have the you know exact same number of people in each district that's just not possible um, but again this, this this process is meant to be able um, to hear from you to make sure that uh, whatever it is that's important to you uh, throughout this process uh, that those concerns are, are being addressed you know, uh, thank you, Chizok. I have um, I have kind of a, a somewhat of a technical question just about the the map tool that was online um, that I was I was looking at. Uh, I noticed that that the map is sort of already it, or it's sort of default broken down into into subunits. I forget what they were called, but but it seems like just different parts of the the city are carved out in these little areas, and you kind of put them in a di different district. And each of them has its own count and, and demographic uh, information there. Are we limited when we're drawing the maps? I mean, we collectively, all the people that are that are giving input here, are we limited to those pre-established subgroups, or can can you break it down even farther, or disregard those completely uh, if we wanted to? Uh, that's a great question, Vice Mayor. Um, so uh, when you're using the uh, mapping tool, uh, and hope if you can just go back to the the landing page for a second. Uh, when you're using the mapping tool, you have two options uh, to start from. Uh, and as you can see on the bottom of the page there, you can either start with a blank plan and draw uh, your own districts from scratch, or you can draw them uh, based on what the current boundaries are and equalize population that way. Uh, in, in general, the, um, the mapping tool has really two options. Uh, one is called block groups and the other one is called blocks. Uh, and uh, uh, but census blocks are the uh, smallest geography that we use to do redistricting. Uh, there may be, um, a, you know, it isn't often that you want to split a census block. Uh, and if you do, you want to typically you would do it uh, in an area where there is no population. Uh, and there may be a good policy reason for doing that, uh, you know, such as a, uh, um, a wash or, uh, you know, a certain a section of the city where the census geography doesn't really match up with the reality. Uh, but we do have to use those census blocks for the most part. And you know, if we get into a situation where we want to split one, we need to look at it carefully and make sure um, that uh, you know, what, whatever we do, we can legally justify and, and meets the criteria. So, uh, so yeah, so we do have to use census blocks. And unfortunately, this census's uh, geography wasn't as good as it was 10 years ago. And so um, there are some areas where they combine blocks or they uh, split blocks, and um, so we just have to be careful with that because it's not as uh, not as clean as it was ten years ago, unfortunately. Yeah. Thank you, and maybe that was just uh, very very likely uh, that was user error on my part by using the block groups instead of the blocks. So maybe I'll maybe I'll go back and try again and, and use blocks instead of the block groups. Um, but that's, yeah, that's interesting. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, sure. yeah, I, I've oh, had a, I've had an oh, enjoyable time clicking around on those things and putting together different, different variations. Um, I don't think I've gotten to a point where I felt very comfortable doing it, but, um, over the next few weeks and months, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do that just for fun. Yeah. Well, vice mayor, I, I kind of think of it, you know, and of course I do this for a living, but 
to me, it's kind of like a video game, you know, so the more practice you get, the better you get at it. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, and yes, uh, just, just so the public's clear, uh, census block groups are, are basically a, a, an aggregation of some census blocks. And so it is a larger piece of geography um, and particularly in an area like the city of Alhambra, which isn't very large, um, utilizing census blocks uh, is, is probably an easier process. At least it'll, it'll let you use some of those uh, more natural boundaries like those uh, larger east-west and north-south thoroughfares that I described mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thanks for clearing that up. Um, just like video games, you pick up hints here and there from people and uh, that's that's a good hint. Uh, to pick up. Absolutely. Um, I, if, if there are any other questions from anyone but me, uh, I'm happy to, we're happy to entertain that. Otherwise, um, unless there's any closing comments um, from our consultant team or city staff, uh, we're open to that. But I, I found this to be very informative and, and educational. I've heard some of it before and some of it was new to me. So I'm glad I, I'm glad I logged on to my own town hall. It's great. Uh, I appreciate that, uh, Vice Mayor, and, and, and you make a good point uh, in, in terms of uh, you do have time. You do have time. You know, this isn't uh, speak up now or it's over. Uh, this is going to be going on for the next few months. Uh, we're, you know, going back to that map or, or that timeline. We're at the beginning of this process. Uh, so, again, it's okay to not uh, know all these concepts or know exactly uh, how this all falls into place. Uh, you do have some time to figure it out, and, and that's what we're here for. Uh, try to be uh, as accessible as we can uh, for you, the, the residents of Alhambra, throughout this process. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll keep trying. We'll, we'll be accessible as much as we can here. Um, again, we have another workshop uh, tomorrow uh, and then um, a few more next week. So um, please just uh, uh, log on to the uh, website. Um, again, or information is available through Facebook. Uh, just uh, send us information as it comes to you. Uh, again, uh, however insignificant you, you may think it is, I can assure you that it's something that, uh, uh, you know, for this process, again, this process is richer the more uh, we hear from uh, the residents as to exactly what you consider to be your district and, and how these lines uh, should be drawn for your city. So, um, if uh, anyone else has any final comments, uh, we'll, we'll just give uh, one last opportunity here for uh, any any one of these attendees to just uh, go ahead and raise your hand. And again, uh, this Thanks. is this is Lauren. Everybody, um, if if you are using a phone and did want to raise your hand, um, as Tzalk said earlier, you would just use star nine to do that. Well, and I don't know about you, Lauren, but I'm interested in meeting Bob, the district builder. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, and then just to add as well, um, I think that, you know, Andrew and Tazak obviously covered everything, um, but in terms of uh, the public comment form and any of the other information um, related to this process, uh, we do have a lot of it on our website, but we also are happy to provide hard copies to anybody. Um, feel free to contact my office via telephone or to drop in here at City Hall, and we'd be happy to print out any of the forms or FAQs or any of the information related to this process, the presentations that have been given. Um, we're very happy to just uh, go ahead and provide those to anybody who's interested. So I just wanted to put that out there as well. Thank you, Lauren. Lauren Miles, our city clerk, thank you for being here and helping walk through as well. Um, I think um, uh, I think we've given ample opportunity for folks to speak up and I'm glad people participated and, and listened tonight. And hopefully if there are questions that come up, they can submit it online or participate in one of our upcoming town hall meetings and public hearings before the city council. So I'm... Um, I guess I'm ready to call it. Thanks again to our consultant team and our staff for putting this together and to our interpreters for their diligence in making sure that everyone has an opportunity to, to listen and be heard here. Um, I, think, uh, I think that does it. So thanks again, everyone. And we'll, we will talk to you soon, I hope. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Good night.